Hi, I'm Katrina. And I'm Belinda. Welcome to Crumbs 13. Uh, today, um, we're going to talk about the teaching at the table. Um, we talked about the woman, uh, Mary, who poured oil on Jesus, mm -hmm. but we didn't want to miss the teaching at the table. Yeah, the teaching is huge. So um, open up your Bible to Luke 7, and actually... If you want to start in verse 36, that's where we are starting today. Um, obviously, love to have you read all of Luke 7, um, but starting in verse 36 is where um, crumbs is going to be found. Yeah, so um, we talked about how important a table is um, in our last crumbs, and we talked about the people who were seated at the table. Mm -hmm. And um, so the Pharisee, Simon, who was a leopard and healed of his leprosy, mm -hmm. um, has invited Jesus to come and have a seat at his table. Mm -hmm. Which is actually really, really important because um, when I read this, that it was a Pharisee's house, it just made me think of all the religious houses um, that I've been exposed to. And I know that there's a lot of people that are probably listening that maybe don't go to church um, because maybe they've been hurt by a church. And I just really, um, I think it's amazing how Jesus shows up in a Pharisee's house. It actually brought me back to a word that I had received from the Lord about his spirit being able to move no matter what physical location we're in. So it's amazing that he's in this Pharisee's home um, and the Pharisees are these religious people who are um, just seen as better. They see themselves as better than everybody else and um, really just filled with a lot of self-righteousness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's no, they don't really understand the relationship because they're so consumed with um, looking the appearance, not living it. So mm -hmm. it's the presence of what others thinks over the presence of what God thinks right. or, or what Jesus thinks. And I think that's why often you hear people say, do you have a relationship with Jesus? Do you have a relationship with him? Mm -hmm. Would he call you friend? Does he know you as friend? And we talked about that in the 10 virgins, um, that, that really sad moment where five of the virgins were taken and he brought them into the wedding feast and the other five weren't there and they all knew him. Yeah. But yet when he shut the door to the wedding feast, those fives that weren't there were knocking on the door. And his response was that I do I not know you. you. And, um, that is grievance because they were waiting for him. Don't miss the fact that they knew that the Messiah would return and they were waiting for him. And you know, this is something that is said often, I hear often, you know, even the demons know who Jesus is. Satan knows who Jesus is. I mean, they recognize him, they know his spirit. And um, so many of us recognize and we know who he is, but there's not a level of intimacy there, which is what we're gonna really move Dive into. into. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, Right off the bat, so there's this whole, we already talked about, so be sure to go back and listen to last week one more time because then this will, mm -hmm. that will segue right into today's. But um, they're sitting at the table and um, Jesus actually says to Simon, Simon, I have something to tell you. <laughs> and right off the bat, I was like, why in the world did Jesus have to say I have something to tell you when we should be saying, Jesus, what do you want to tell me? You know, mm -hmm. speak to me. What do you want to hear? What do you want us to hear, Lord? Unplug our ears so that we hear every word that you say. Um, tell us, Lord, tell us the directions you would have us to go. Tell mm -hmm. us the things in which you would want us to do. That's what a relationship looks like. Yet, here, this one who's been healed mm -hmm. has the Messiah sitting at his table He's already raised, and he has Lazarus sitting at his table who was raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. Yet Jesus is the one that says, I have to tell you something. And it's also an example of his radical mercy and grace that he speaks up when we're distracted by our own agenda and our I own daily right. tasks. He speaks up and says, I have something to tell you. Um, and he's not perturbed or deterred by 
the fact that we aren't necessarily listening um, and that he has to get our attention. Yeah, it's just key to look. It is. Very so mm -hmm. what does, let's just, let's have Katrina just read the scripture because I um, think it's mm -hmm. short enough and it's really important. So just listen closely. So I'm going to start in verse 41 and go to verse 43. And I'm reading out of the New King James Version. So there was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence, which it's important to note that a pence is considered a day's wage and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me therefore, which of them will love him most? And I'm sorry, I missed verse 40. And it was, and Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee, which is the part that Belinda's talking about where he said, I have something to say. And Simon said, master say on. So down to verse 42. And when they had nothing to pay, the person who owed 500 versus the person who had 50, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? So which of those people who owed the money will love him most? And so, the creditor. And Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, thou hast right, rightly judged. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's almost um, important to see how Simon, who was healed of being a leopard, um, was so caught up in the distraction of the sinful woman who had come to the table. Like she was breaking lots of rules and um, she was such a sinful woman. We don't really know uh, all her sins, but obviously that Simon was in disgust. Like he was mm -hmm. annoyed and disgust that this woman would even step in because mm -hmm. that's how this whole teaching came about. And um, so Simon is the one who is like the one who has been forgiven less. Mm -hmm. And Mary is the one who has been forgiven so much. And what a beautiful picture of Mary just having this radical like need and want for Jesus because she's walking into a home of a Pharisee, knowing what her history is, knowing what they think of her and knowing the cost of that. And she just goes anyway. Right. She goes anyway and does what the Lord has called her mm -hmm. to do. But we want to just talk about this this nature of receiving what God has done. So yeah. she moves in radical faith beyond what anyone else would say or think. And yeah. it's happening. Like it's happening at the table. Right. Like they're speaking She's at out his feet. Yeah. Yeah. They're speaking out loud and 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 Jesus has to pause their negative speaking, mm -hmm. which is how often do we have to pause because we're only complaining. Mm -hmm. We're only talking about the negative. We're not thinking about the blessings. We're not thinking about the good. We're not dwelling on um, all his abundance in our life. And so Jesus pauses everything at the table and mm -hmm. says, Simon, I have something to say. I have something to say. Like, listen up. And so he stops the complaining. He stops the negative direction by bringing about a teaching. And I really believe that God has something to say to each one of us all day throughout the day. I don't, I don't think that it's like uh, here or there. I, I just think that he's always wanting to be in communication with us. And sometimes people are like, well, I don't hear him. I think that means that you should just sit quietly. Mm -hmm. There's a discipline and an obedience that comes with hearing from the Lord. And um, it's interesting that this is the part that we're at right now because um, this morning as I was reading again before I came to meet with you, uh, the Lord was just showing me situations where people that have been Christians their whole lives, I've shared testimonies with people of the way that God has met with me. And I have not been a Christian my whole life. Um, and just the, um, the attitude of how is it that she can experience God in this way, but I don't, and I've been a Christian my whole life and the enemy will use that mm -hmm. to keep you from what God has for you. And the thing that God keeps showing me is that it all comes back to your level of intimacy with him. Mm -hmm. Um, and my, and 
and when we get to heaven, we will be married to Jesus. So I just want to use this as an example. Um, my marriage to Jesus, let's say, doesn't look like your marriage to Jesus. It doesn't look like Belinda's marriage to Jesus. Just like our our worldly marriages, Belinda's marriage uh, doesn't look like my marriage. Mm -hmm. And um, we get so wrapped up in this comparison of like, well, I am righteous and I have done everything right and I have followed all the rules. How is it that this woman who was a prostitute is the one that's receiving so much from him? Well, it's because she longs for him. She yearns for him. And actually, if you go down to verse 47, um, it is so profound. I just want to read that really mm -hmm. quickly. Wherefore, this is Jesus speaking, wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. It all comes back to the intensity of our love for him. Mm -hmm. It's so true. It's so true. And he actually, in that, right before that, he actually also talks about how Simon was the one invited him to home, yet he didn't greet him with a kiss. Mm -hmm. Yet she hasn't stopped. He says she hasn't ceased to stop kissing his feet. His feet. Yeah. His feet. You know, and, and so it talks about Simon didn't even give him something to wash his hands or wash his feet, yet she hasn't stopped cleansing him with her tears. Mm -hmm. So the amount of humility and the actions, what it is taking to serve Jesus in her rawness, in, in, in her imperfection. Mm -hmm. Like she just goes in all of her imperfection. And I, and that to me is a gift because, um, I can go before the throne in all of my imperfection and it is a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, he doesn't look at my imperfection. He looks at my heart. Mm -hmm. He looks at my heart and when I come to him and how I'm going to release that. And that's what she's doing. She is moving in her imperfection, but her full heart belongs to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just um, want to give you a couple of crumbs for how can you love Jesus? Because some of you may be listening and you're like, I don't like, where do I start reading my Bible, you know, reading a devotional? Um, but it starts as simple as loving other people the way that Jesus loved you. And I'll tell you this morning, the Lord was speaking to me about just the fact that he loved us first. Mm -hmm. He loved us first. He loved Mary first when he came born of a virgin to live a life that was not easy. He loved us first. So what are we called to do? We're called to love first. And, um, in doing so we are worshiping him and we are being intimate with him. So it's as simple as starting there. Mm -hmm. That's why he says the greatest commandment is, is love one love. another. Mm -hmm. yeah. Loving God yeah. and loving one another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the things too that um, when he, at, when Katrina just spoke about her sins are forgiven, you know, go um, through her sacrifice. So it was in her worship, in her repentance, in her humble actions, and in her bringing forth all she had and laying it at his feet and, and moving in that radical faith and that in that raw faith mm -hmm. of um, not not focusing on her sin, not focusing in her shame, no. not feeling unworthy. She just went. And um, and that's what we need to do is we just need to go and pursue him mm -hmm. and not focus on what we think or how bad we are. Because then he says your 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 sins have been forgiven. Mm -hmm. And um, in Matthew six fourteen, it talks about forgiveness. And in in the Lord's prayer, we speak, Lord, forgive me, forgive our trespasses as you've forgiven ours. And and the Lord is clear to say, Jesus is clear to say, if you hold an offense against another, if you hold anger and you hold unforgiveness from another, He then holds it from you. And mm -hmm. um, there's ownership in that. So. He, that's why he says, "Don't let the sun go down in your wrath. Like, don't let your ang don't let the sun go down in unforgiving, uh, not bringing forgiveness. So, when someone offends you, be quick to forgive them. You know, you don't have that doesn't mean you have to go directly to them, but you do need to put yourself in right standing with the Father. And and sometimes 
they don't need to hear your forgiveness. That's between them and the father, but the yeah. father needs to hear your forgiveness where you're like mm -hmm. in your heart and in your breath and in your quiet moment, Lord, I just forgive them for the words they spoke. Mm -hmm. Lord, I forgive them for those rude actions. Lord, forgive me for my response. Lord, I responded in anger. Lord, that was not of you. Lord, help me to be more like you in my response so that they don't miss seeing you and they miss seeing me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah, so um, when we are focused on other sin, this was something mm -hmm. God brought to me, but when we are focused on another sin, we should really take, um, because that's what Simon was doing and some of the others at the table, they were focused on this woman's sin, yet not taking a good hard look at themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so be clear to understand what God sees as sin and what he sees will allow you into the kingdom and what will not allow you into the kingdom. And he is clear, like I looked up, if you are wondering what God identifies sin, and I would suggest that everyone look these verses up, I would look up 1 Corinthians 6, 9, Galatians 5.19, Ephesians 5.5, 5, 1 Timothy 1.9, and Revelations 21.8. And in all of that, it talks about um, a list of things that the Father's like, in these things you will not inherit the kingdom. In one of those scriptures, it's beautiful because the Father, in, in Corinthians, it talks about, and, and let me just be clear to say, I think in two of those accounts, it um, <clears throat> out of those five scriptures, um, it says that um, lying, liars are not welcome into the kingdom. Therefore, everyone needs to repent because there isn't a single person that walks this earth that hasn't lied. Mm -hmm. A little lie doesn't mm -hmm. make a difference mm -hmm. or I lied to protect. Mm. Yeah. So. To protect who? Yeah. So <laughs> anyways, that being said, mm -hmm. um, it talked at the end of it, it said about um, some of you, this was the part that I landed on. There were all these things in which we're going to keep you from inheriting the kingdom. But then it says, um, for some of you, you have inherited the kingdom of God because you were washed, you were sanctified, and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and, um, and through the spirit of God. So it's not through like something I do, it's through what he does. Yes. I just want to make sure. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so it says that so clearly it's it's speaking of repenting. Yeah. So receiving and repenting of your sin, being washed, which is twofold, that is being washed through baptism, mm -hmm. but also letting the Spirit of God wash over you. Mm -hmm. And then being sanctified, which is the process. Mm -hmm. of being made pure and holy and walking your faith with Jesus Christ. And I just want to make sure being washed, so the water baptism, we um, aren't of the belief that that is a requirement for salvation. Oh, so just right. the way that that was put, I want to make sure that that's clear, that we, we don't believe that if you weren't baptized, that you're not, that you can't be saved. Amen. So. Yes, that's very good. And then justified, and only Jesus Christ can justify you on the day of um, judgment. Mm -hmm. And so as we um, close this out, mm -hmm. um, listen or say to the Father, speak to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, we can't wait to meet you at the master's table. Have a very blessed day.